The Content Aware tool in Photoshop is amazing and the latest version of Photoshop, the latest update, Photoshop 2019, has a new improved version that will blow your mind. So before I show you that, I want to show you what the 2018 version looks like that many of you may have dabbled with and it was okay and but it had its limitations so let me show you what I mean so like this image here let's say you've got your file open so what we'll do is before we do any retouching we always duplicate the layer so that we retouch non-destructively so let's say that in this image I don't like this little hole here it's like a bit ugly so if I select my marquee tool and make a selection of the area okay so I'll come in zoom in and then I come up to edit fill and there's a little drop down box and let me choose content aware and click OK Photoshop thinks about it and with the clever, clever and advanced algorithm that it has, it finds all the pixels nearby and fills in that area, which is pretty clever. And it kind of looks okay. Uh, not a bad job when it's not too complicated. What about if we try and remove this woman using the same technique? So what I'm going to do is trace around the area. So make a selection of the area that we want to fill. All right. So this is the area that I want to get rid of. This, this woman here that's walked into my shot, the photo bomber. Okay, so I've made my selection. I come down to edit, fill choose content aware and hit OK. Photoshop thinks about it, looks at the pixels and kind of does an OK job. But what it does is it looks at the pixels around the area and makes up its mind as to what would be the best version of that. So it's kind of OK, but you've got to come back and clean all of that up. So that's Photoshop 2018. If I open now the Photoshop, the latest version, so same image, there it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is I don't need to choose a new layer because I'll show you what happens now. So if I make a selection of the woman again, go around all right so I've made my selection and I come down to edit there's fill but if I go down a couple more there's a new action here called content aware fill if I click on that look what happens I get this little dialog box there's my original file and here's what Photoshop has done it, and it's made the same mistake again it's selected the area right next to the woman's foot and it's filled it in using that but here's where it gets really good what I can do if I zoom out so on the left is my selection. The area that is red is the area that Photoshop is telling you. The overlay in red is Photoshop is telling you this is the area that I'm going to select from to fill in the space where this woman belongs. So what you can do is using these new tools is I can now come in and you can see I've got a brush tool, I've got a selection lasso tool, I've got a move tool, and I've got a zoom tool. With my brush tool, if I select the minus, I can now come in, see how my brush has got that little minus on it? I can now say to Photoshop, 
I don't want you to use this area to fill in. I don't want you to use pixels from here. I don't want you to use any of the pixels from the doorway. And I can, in fact, just select pixels that I think match that area. So I don't want any of this, so I can take it away. I don't think any of this is going to be helpful, so I'll take this whole area away as well. And let me get rid of this doorway as well. So now what I'm saying to Photoshop is I only want you to look in and around those areas that are uh, that are marked red. And Photoshop thinks about it. You can see that little spinny wheel there. And have a look at that. It does a really good job. Now you've got some other settings here that you can tweak the the selection as well. So and basically it's going to be different for every shot. So you can check scale and have a look what it does. You'll see that it's thinking. And if it looks better, you leave it. There's also mirror. And that's more if you've got like patterns and things like that. Let's have a look how that looks. Does it look better or worse? Let's uncheck it. I think it looks better without. And you can have a look at the color ad adaptation. You can have it set to default, none. Let's have a look what none looks like. I don't like that, so I'm going to go to the default setting, which I think looked pretty good. And then there's rotation adaptation. So you can try that. So try low and see what happens. And I think that makes a, a slight difference uh, and improvement. But I think that is looking pretty good. And the only thing that it didn't do well was fill in this area here where the pipe continues. So the other great thing that uh, Photoshop has now with this content aware fill tool is that it'll output to a new layer. You can output to the current layer, a new layer or a duplicate layer. I always choose new layer and I can hit OK. And I can come back here and there is my new layer. So non-destructive editing. So you can see that Photoshop has done a pretty good job at removing the figure from this image, but there are a couple of issues here. Like there's the little dip where the lady's foot was and this pipe here hasn't quite been continued, which is an easy fix. So what I like to do is just do a little bit of hand cleaning up with the clone stamp from here. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to come into my clone stamp. I'm going to have a blend mode of normal, opacity 100%, flow 19%, and I'm going to have like a maybe 20% hardness. Might go a little bit harder. We'll try 50% hardness on my brush just so there isn't too much of a feather. And what I'm going to do, I can use the bracket keys to make my brush smaller or larger. The other thing that you want to make sure is that you're sampling all layers. Okay, that's important. So what I'm going to do is let me just get rid of that clone stamp there. All right, so First of all, I'm going to tackle this area here where there's a dip. So what I'm going to do is hover over the area that I want to clone. So remember that there are tutorials, in-depth tutorials on cloning. But basically what it is, is it's like we're taking a graft of this area here and we're placing it over this area here. So in order to do that, hover your mouse over the area that you want to take the selection from and on a Mac you want to be holding down the option key and on a Windows you would need to be holding down the option key and you'll see that you get that cursor there. Uh, click on that area to make a selection and then I'm going to move my mouse over to the area that I want to graft onto and you can see that I can continue. I'm lining up my pavers there and now I can just brush 
over that area. Just going back and forth, back and forth, and you can see that it's done a beautiful job just repairing that little area there. All right, so that's that taken care of. And then just for the ability to be able to easily edit your work and in case you make a mistake, particularly when you're starting out, I'm going to create a new layer to just fix up this little crooked line here. So again, I'm going to sample from this area here holding down the option on a Mac, Alt on a Windows, make a selection, move my cursor along and I'm just brushing across there and filling in that area. All right. So we've got that new layer. I'm going to now do the pipe. So what I'm going to do is holding down Option Mac, Alt on a PC, and I'm going to click on that area, and then I'm just going to come down, and I'm going to go all the way over the edge. And I'll show you why in a minute. So I've made my selection. There it is there on its own layer, and you can see that the pipe looks okay, but the surrounding wall doesn't look so good crash hot so what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to that so that's that little icon there it's that rectangle with a circle in the middle and I come back have black as my foreground color and I'm just going to paint over that area so it's going to take that those areas away and it's a great way to just fine tune any little retouch jobs like this. So that's just clean that up nicely. And so if you've got some time, you can do that a lot nicer and I'll probably need to fix up that curve. But you can see how good it is before and after. Okay, let's have a look at something slightly more complicated so this is a situation I know many of you have found yourself in. You've taken a shot of someone, but you weren't able to move the lights quite far enough out of the shot, or you forgot to take a clean plate. And so if we use some in the 2018 version of Photoshop, so let's have a look at what old school Photoshop content aware fill does. So I'm gonna go, make sure I trace around my light stand and I go well over the edges, making sure I'm not touching any of the light stand. I don't wanna to touch the umbrella there. Come all the way up here, all the way out. All right, so I've made my selection, edit, fill, Content aware, okay. It's going to think about it for a bit. And it doesn't do too bad a job. If we zoom in, you can see where the issues are. Okay. It's kind of botched it up the transition between the water over here compared to the water over here isn't great it's not fantastic in here and the worst part of it is here in the sky the pattern is just repeated so it kind of looks like uh, a bad uh, a botched clone job so that's the 2018 version and you would think that this is a big ask of Photoshop and m most of us would just go ahead and crop the image out. Um, but let's have a look what the 2019 version does with this image. So let's bring it up here. Okay, so here's the same image and I'm now in the updated 2019 version of Photoshop. So again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a selection. Go around.
All right, so there's my selection. Always make sure you don't have a feather selected when you do this because that's going to interfere with Photoshop's very sexy algorithm. Okay, so I'm going to come down and hit Content Aware Fill and let's have a look what it does. So we've got our dialog box up and at the moment Photoshop is saying I'm going to use the entire area as reference to fill in the area where you want to cover up this softbox. And I know for a fact that that's probably not a good idea. So I'm going to help Photoshop along. So the area in red is the area that Photoshop is going to use. So I'm going to remove some of those areas. So I know that this pier and my model here are not going to help fill in that area. So I'm going to remove them. All right, so it's that brush tool is selected and I've got the minus selected. So that's taking away from the mast area. Okay, I will include the sky because I think that's necessary. And I will also include the foreshore because that's going to fill in that area. But what I'm going to do is also remove the umbrella so I don't confuse it and get rid of this little chair here as well. And just make sure that I'm also going to remove this section of the pier to make life easy so Photoshop then doesn't duplicate this staircase as well. So you can see over this side here as I've been doing that it's the selection is gradually getting better and it's you have to admit it's pretty good. It's a complicated image here in the background. There is a lot going on. Photoshop is very very clever. This is this is pretty cool stuff. Uh, so now what I can do is I can, let me just zoom out here and I'm going to just make this a bit bigger here. What I want to do now is just fine tune my selection. So again, it's different for every image. So I'll come in and let me see what color adaptation, if I go to none, how that looks. I think it was better at the default. Much better. So let's try high. No good. So let's go back to default. All right. Rotation adaptation. Let's try low. And I'm looking mostly in the sky area to see what happens when I... No. So that doesn't improve it. So I turn that off. Let's see what happens when I hit scale. No good either. So we'll, sorry, scale, we'll uncheck scale. Okay. Let's try mirror. Wondering if I think Mira looks a lot better. So I think Mira does a better job of creating those clouds. The transition looks a lot more natural. So I'm going to stick to Mira and then I'm going to output that to a new layer. Wait till Photoshop stops thinking. It's still thinking. So it, this uses a fair bit of memory. You can imagine it's. Um, Pretty sophisticated stuff. So wait till it's made its selection and lined up all the pixels. Hit OK. And there it is. So there's our original and there's our new layer. So if we zoom in, we can see it's not too bad, but in here, just deselect. There are a couple of issues. This is a bit dodgy in here and this is certainly a bit dodgy in here. So what what you can do, but the sky looks really good. So 
what I can do is I like to do these in stages, particularly for something this complicated. So what I'm going to do is now merge these layers. So it's this layer and this layer, and I'm going to combine them all onto their own layer. So it's Command, Option, Shift, E. All right, so now I've got this layer and this layer merged onto their own layer, and I'm going to do the whole lot again with smaller selections. All right, so let's start with this area in here, which is not looking uh, too fantastic. So I'm going to come in and make a selection around this area. In fact, that's too big a selection. I'm going to just come into where the pixels don't look quite right. So edit, content aware fill. So we get our dialog box up and this time Photoshop again has said, all right, I can see what you, I can see where you're going here. I'm just going to select the area directly around, have a look at our, our image here and it's better, but there are things that I don't like about it. So again, I'm going to remove the umbrella out of the picture. And I think I'm also going to remove this section of the pier. And I think I only want Photoshop to use this section of the pier. And I'm going to get rid of the chair. And I don't need the foreshore at all. So we'll get rid of all of that. So I'm telling Photoshop just to use pretty much that section of the pier or jetty. And let's have a look how that's going. It's not looking too bad. It's definitely cleaned up in here a lot more and the mass of the, these are all ships here in the background. It's picked up all that detail uh, and it does look a lot better. So what I might do is I'm going to see if scale works because if you have a look at over this side here, the jetty or pier is going back in the distance. So I want to see if using scale will help improve the perspective a little bit and helps the overall look of that image. So let's see what that does. And it does. And I think that looks pretty good just for that section. So all I want to do now is clean up the water in here. So I'm going to do that in its own separate layer. So I'm going to hit OK. And there it is there. That's our new layer before and after. Let me just come in a bit closer so you can see. Before and after. I think it's done a pretty good job there for something way off in the background. Okay, so again, Command, Option, Shift, E up onto its own layer. And now the final step is I just want to come in and clean up this area here, the water. Just smooth that out a little bit. So I guess I could also try uh, cloning, but I might just see what happens if I try content aware again. So edit, content aware fill. All right, so let's see what Photoshop has given us as a selection. All right, so again, we've got a lot of area that is unnecessary. So I'm going to remove the jetty out of the picture. Okay, so we don't need the sky, don't need the jetty in the image. Get rid of all of that. Again, don't need the chair, that's not helping. And I definitely don't need the shoreline for this. So it's just the water that I want Photoshop to select from. So I can now have a look. And that is looking pretty good. You can see that's improved it a lot. Uh, scale won't help. 
let's see if color adaptation let's try high and let's see if that helps with the transition mm. Let's try none. I think I'll, I prefer none in, in this instance. Let's try the default again. So you can see it's kind of a lucky draw sometimes and it's just a matter of like, well, let me see what happens. I think the default is pretty good. I think that looks really nice. Now we've got the lovely transition. And I think that that I think I'm done. I've just got to clean up this shoreline, uh, and that's it. So let's uh, commit to that. So there it is, up on its own new little layer there. Before and after, I think that has done a good job. And so finally, I'll pop that up on its own layer. I'm going to create a new empty layer, and I'm just going to come in and clone this area here this little bit of seashore so i've got my clone tool selected mode is normal opacity 100 percent i've got my flow around 19 percent making sure that uh, all layers is selected and i'm just going to start here Make a selection and just brush. Over that just to clean it up. And I think that's finished it off nicely. So let's have a look. Before, and after. And that's using the new 2019 Photoshop Content Aware Fill Tool.